الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى يا رب لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك عظيم سلطانك وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في سبيل ربه حتى أتاه اليقين الله مرزه عنا وعن والدينا وعن الإسلام والمسلمين خير ما جازيت به نبيا عن قومه ورسولا عن أمته اللهم حين على سنته وتوفنا على ملته وأوردنا حوضه واسقنا من يده الشريفة شربة هنيئة لا نضمأ بعدها أبدا ثم أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters In my previous khutbah I talked about the inward and outward and how every one of us has his own secret and apparent and how Al-Islam and the teaching of the Prophet وسلم, taught us to work hard to purify and to fix and perfect our inward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن تُبْدُوا مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ تُخْفُوهُمْ يُحَاسِبُكُمْ بِهِ اللَّهِ Whether you show what's within yourselves or conceal it, Allah will bring you to account for it. And this explains why al-ikhlas or sincerity is the spirit of every act of worship. Sincerity is the spirit. So any act of worship, any good deeds without ikhlas, then it is like a dead body, it has no life. It's like a, using foreign currency in different country. It's not going to be accepted. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa taught us this beautiful dua in which he says, Oh Allah, Allah maj'al sirri khayran min alaniyati. Oh Allah, may my secret better than my apparent condition. And make my apparent condition righteous. Allah maj'al sirri khayran min alaniyati. It seems that uh, it's part of human nature that we pay more attention to our appearance, sometimes at the expense of our secrets. And the community, of course, will help us achieving some of the good deeds. Some good deeds are to be done in public, and we are required to help one another, remind one another of doing what's right. We do Hajj together. Even if you don't know anything about the rules of Hajj, then you go with the group, go with the crowd, then you can achieve Hajj, because you are with a good group. <coughs> Praying Jum'ah and Taraweeh, and so on, all these things are to be done in public. But if there is no sincerity, then this work will not be accepted. And the, as the community can help every one of us achieving these good deeds, sincerity is our sole responsibility. No one can help you with this. No one will help you being sincere. You have to work on this yourself. It is your responsibility. Don't expect others to purify your intention for you. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu said in this beautiful and comprehensive general hadith, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Deeds are by intention, or questions or judged based on the intention. One of the gods that people worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wealth and also the social appearance. How do we look in the community? How do people see us? And of course there's nothing wrong in having a good reputation or you know people talk positively about you but what is not acceptable is to make this our ultimate goal or to compromise the sincerity to make wrong decisions simply and exclusively to make the community see us in a good image. And this happens all the time. This happens all the time. And Rasulullah warned us from being such a person who pays more attention to the outside than the inside. We all have in our life good news and bad news. We all like good, uh, sorry, good surprise and bad surprise. 
We always like good surprises because it makes us very happy and excited, but we also don't like to experience bad surprises. And the Day of Judgment will be full of good and bad surprises. Some of these bad surprises is, as Rasulullah told us, Hadith and Sahih Muslim, the first people will be thrown in the hill are a scholar, a shaheed, and a spender, someone who spends so much. Rasulullah told us that Allah will bring the first one, the scholar, and Allah will remind him of his blessings. I gave you this intelligence, strong memory, fame, eloquence. What did you do with it? He said, Ya Allah, I spent my entire life seeking knowledge and spreading knowledge, teaching people, guiding people to you. Allah will tell him that you are lying. And the angels will tell him that you are lying. To be said to him that you worked very hard, you studied so hard. To be said that he's a scholar. And this has been said. You have no reward today. You got already your reward. And the shaheed will be brought. Allah would remind him of his blessings. I give you this and give you that. What did he do with the blessings that I have given you? He said, Ya Allah, I fought for your cause. Until I lost my life, I paid the ultimate price for your sake. And Allah will tell him, no, you are lying. You have done this to be said he's brave. And you got that. It has been said already. They made a statue for you. You have no reward for me today. And you'll be taken to the hellfire. And a munfiq, someone who spent a good amount of his wealth, and Allah would remind him, I gave you this job, this wealth, this family. What did you do with it? He'll say, Allah, I spend, I made money and I spend this money in every way that you like, for your sake. And Allah will tell him, no, you're lying. You said so, you, you did so, so that people say he's generous. You saw the reputation from the community. Not my sake. That was not for my sake. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows exactly who's sincere and who's not sincere. So we don't want to go through this bad, bad, bad surprise in the day of judgment that we come with tons of good deeds and we find out that does not count. None of these good deeds count because it was Sincerity was not there. We don't want to worship the society, to consider the community, the society, as, as, as an idol. And we make decisions based on that. We should make decisions based on what's right, what's justice. And this happens in many different occasions. For example, marriage. Marriage is one of the best examples for this. That we pay so much attention to how the community would see the, the future husband and wife or, of our sons and our daughters. Parents sometimes get very heavily involved and reject marriage from a good, righteous person because simply um, the color of his or her skin is not matching. Because of this person is a convert. And for some reason, I don't know why, converts are looked at as less Muslim than others. Or be because he or she are, you know, are not coming from the same country, different race. Although Rasulullah sallam, warned us very much against choosing based exclusively based on beauty. The Prophet said, Be aware of Khabra al-Dimin. said, Who is Khabra al-Dimin, Ya Rasulullah? said, The beautiful and unethical woman. Beautiful, very attractive. But she has no ethics. Stay away, run away from this. And because we pay so much attention and consider the appearance, we sometimes make these decisions. We reject righteous, good people because of their race, or color, or job, or the amount of money they have. This happens because we pay so much attention on that parents. And I want to mention this story, the story of one of the Sahaba that his name is not mentioned frequently. His name is Julaibib. 
Juaibi was a poor person and he was short, weak, and as he was described, he does not look good. In our today's language, ugly from outside. The appearance is not that good, not attractive at all. But his heart was full of iman. And Rasulullah with, with his beautiful eyes, with the eyes of his heart, can see the beauty of the person, can see it. People see the ugliness outside, but he وسلم, knows who is Julaybi. It's beautiful in the eyes of the Prophet وسلم, because his inside was beautiful. But people don't like look at the inside. People have different ways to measure and to judge others. So one day the Prophet وسلم, asked him, Julaybi, why, why don't you get married? He said, Dear Rasulullah, who would accept me? Not attractive at all, not a good candidate. And the Prophet وسلم, said to one of the Ansar, who has a daughter in the age of marriage, that I want to ask um, for your daughter's hand. And the, this Ansari thought that the Prophet وسلم, himself wants to marry his daughter. He's very excited, very happy. And he said, but this is not for me. Um, this is for Julaybib. And the man was shocked. He thought the Prophet وسلم, and now he's talking about Julaybib. Even the name of Julaybib is kind of difficult. Not very attractive. And the man was kind of disappointed. And he said, well, let me talk to her mother. Obviously, the mother has the upper hand and the final word, as it is the case in some families. And he went to his wife, and he had this discussion with his wife. And Rasulullah wants our daughter to marry Julaybib. And she said, Julaybib? No, wallahi, this will never happen. This will never happen. Because of, you know, what, all, all what I mentioned before. He's poor, he's not attractive, nobody would like him to marry his daughter. And the man was ready to go back to the Prophet وسلم, to tell him that, we are sorry, it's not going to happen. But the girl heard this discussion, and she said, what's going on? They told her what's going on, and she said to them, would you reject someone the Prophet ﷺ proposed? It is the Prophet who proposed him, must be a good person. I will accept him, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make things easy for us. And the man went back to the Prophet ﷺ. And he told him, yes, Ya Rasulullah, we'll accept Julaybib to be the husband of our daughter. And the Prophet ﷺ raised his hand and he made this beautiful dua. Allahumma subba alayhim al khayra sabban. Ya Allah, pour the goodness upon them. Wala taj'al aishahuma kaddan. Don't make their life difficult. A lot of rizq, easiness. This is a dua of the Prophet ﷺ. Very few days after, the enemies came. And the Prophet وسلم, asked everybody to go to fight the enemies. And as usual, after the battle, the Prophet وسلم, asked for a report about those who got killed or injured. And when they reported the Prophet وسلم, the name of the Sahaba who um, were shaheed, then he said, do you miss someone? He said, no, not. He said, but I miss Julaybi. Used to be the first draw. I see him all the time in the masjid. And I miss him. They went with the Prophet and they looked around and they found Julabi. Good kill. After he killed seven of the enemies. They killed him. And they started digging a grave for him. And the narrator of the hadith said that there was no um, sarir or a couch for Julabi except the two arms of the Prophet وسلم. The Prophet وسلم told him to bring him to me. He was carrying him to the Lars and was sitting down and Julabib was lying on his arms. And then he looked at him and he said, Huwa minni wa ana minhu. He's part of me and I'm part of him. That is Julabib. And the Sahaba were kind of very happy for him that it is the Prophet وسلم himself who brought him down to his grave. 
That is Julaibib. And soon after, the narrator of the hadith said that his will, his wife, after she finished her idda, she was the most thought after lady. Many of the Sahaba were racing to marry this righteous woman. But again, um, we have to really rethink about this zahir and batil, inward and outward. We have to make our judgment based on what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, based on truth and justice. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله تقوا الله وأطيعوه إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون Brothers and sisters, before I end, um, Alhamdulillah, last Friday we resumed this uh, Hearts and Minds youth program Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Amin, uh, you know, work, working very well and today, inshallah, we'll start a new a uh, series of lectures about Ahkam al-Ibadat or Fiqh al-Ibadat we teach our youth the basic Ahkam of our uh, Ibadat and um, next Friday and the Friday after inshallah we'll have uh, Professor Saeed Khan coming to teach our youth about um, Islamic history he will summarize Islamic history from the time of the Umayyads to um, World War II and the modern time so our youth need to understand our uh, very rich history and next week, next month, inshallah, we'll have Kir Michigan coming to talk to our youth about how to present Islam to non-Muslims. And then, inshallah, we have also a lecture about uh, entrepreneurship. So hopefully some of our youth will be inspired and in the future will start their own business. So alhamdulillah, this uh, program this semester, which will end in the end of April, is very rich. We have plenty of uh, very nice activities, uh, religious and also life skills. And I hope, inshallah, those who did not register yet, to inshallah register, we'll meet tonight at 7 uh, p.m. And then after a chat tonight, we'll have a movie night. So we have some uh, fun activities and some educational activities and social activities. So this is for high school students. If you have a son or daughter in high school level, please register them and let them come and enjoy, inshallah, this beautiful program. اللهم إنا أسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم إنا أسألك رزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا أصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آثرتنا التي إليها معادنا اللهم اجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث فأصلح لنا شأننا كله اللهم لا تكن إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين ولا إلى أحد من الناس يا رب العالمين اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل اللهم إنا نسألك من الخير كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم نسألك من كل خير سألك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من كل شر استعاذك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اجعل سرنا خيرا من علانيتنا واجعل علانيتنا خيرا اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا أصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل اللهم اشفنا واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموتى المسلمين وانصر الإسلام وعز المسلمين برحمتك يا أرحم الرحمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أقوم الصلاة